Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we have the opportunity to work on a, another Shimano reel. This is the Shimano Tyranos. It's the 10. Uh, it's a lever drag, two-speed reel, and like my grandkids like to say, some are funner than others. I guess this one will be funner in terms of uh, servicing this, but uh, we'll take the time to show you how to service this reel and how to uh, keep it running for a long time to come. It is a two-speed. You can push the button in to get the lower speed, and then you just push this lever here to pop it out to get the, the higher speed. So uh, we'll show you how all of that comes apart. Hopefully we won't lose the spru this spring that's in this little push-button mechanism here. And if we do, we'll just laugh about it and go find it. So uh, we'll uh, see what we can do to make this wheel ready for the spring fishing season. To start, I'm going to remove the exterior pieces, and as I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That way you'll be able to see when I'm posting and what I'm posting. You're essentially looking at the reels that come into my shop for service and repair, and they vary quite a bit. Everything from freshwater, what I'll call pond reels, the very small reels, to the larger reels, and kind of everything in between. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures of the assemblies, particularly if you uh, haven't worked on these before, uh, because it's worth noting the orientation of the pieces and parts, kind of how they come together, how they come apart, and well, if this nasty little spring here gets lost, you know how it's set in there. There's a little ridge that comes up on here and sits in. Well, you can do this two ways. You can actually try pulling this off, or you can remove the screw and try and hold that assembly in place. That's my preferred approach. There's a little Phillips head screw holding that on in here. And just be careful. If you know what the, the outcomes could be, that makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to get it done. All right, so this whole assembly should come up now. And then if you walk it out, kind of holding everything together here, but sometimes you can clear that. It's not easy, but if you kind of press in, and then you can push down. There we go. You can hold it together, and you can hold that spring in that assembly. And just be aware it's there. Just be very careful with it when you put it down that you don't uh, explode it. So the two assemblies go like that. I'm just going to put them on top there just like that. <coughs> I'm going to hold those pieces in the corner of a parts tray just like that. All right, well that's <laughs> probably the biggest issue with this reel. Just that one little thing there. Now we have a two-speed button here. I believe that's a 14 millimeter handle, and that'll just come right out. So I like to use the, the wrench to break the screw, and then if you can do it by hand, remove the piece after that. So we're backing this off, and this whole plunger assembly comes off. You do not need to do anything with that assembly other than put it into a parts tray for safekeeping. Well, that leads us to this is why I say take pictures, things fall. The handle, a little washer under the handle, and there's the collar for the gear assembly. So we're going to put all of that, wipe it down. Right now Chris is probably saying I've got more than enough use out of this uh, tray here, the, the paper towel, so uh, probably time to, to move that over. Those go into my parts tray for safekeeping. Yes, I will change over my paper towel. And we'll kind of continue with that. I think this may or may not be part of that assembly. Now it's just uh, got some old grease on there. So a lot of what you're doing when you're working on a reel like this is you're, you're cleaning, you're inspecting, you're lubricating, and you're replacing broken parts. That's pretty much a consistent approach across all kinds of reels, whether they're a lever drag like this reel, or if, uh, just a base conventional reel. You have your preset adjuster, you have a spring which sits inside that preset adjuster, 
And then we have a ridged uh, ramp knob. I always like to work with my reel when I'm re removing it in the free spool position. That way it gives me the right orientation for when I go to install later on. We have three screws that are holding on the uh, guide bezel for that lever drag. And sometimes it's just a lot easier to remove the screws. Nope, where they go? We have two screws here that have those little bump guards on. That's the free spool stop and the max drag stop. And we have a couple of things going on behind it. So keep your pieces together. You notice that the ramp behind here, this is the back ramp of the reel, has two springs. Again, take a picture in case they shoot. Those are controlling the, uh, the knobs to allow you to go into free spool and to go into uh, max drag. The handle is basically uh, the lever drag handle and then we usually have a little washer that goes on the case here. Maybe a second one here. We'll leave that. I don't think that's going to matter. So take the pictures and then we can continue with removing the two screws that, are, that I believe are holding the rest of this on. I also have two screws in the back, but I think that's just holding a bezel and those don't have to come off. I guess we'll take a look. It's been a while since I worked on one of these. I've worked, worked on a series of lever drag reels for uh, Rick, but I haven't worked on all of them, or I haven't done the videos on all of them. So we'll take those two and we'll see if we can slide the bezel off. Well, we can slide the bezel off to reveal about five more screws here. So Shimano went screw, screw happy here, and uh, I believe I'm going to have to take, well, we're going to find out. Let's take the three or four or five screws out of here, take pictures. These screws sometimes are different based on the location in the, uh, the set. So I like to take them out. I'm going to lay them on the table. Some might be short, some might be long. I want to make sure I know where the each goes. If they are different, the first two are the same. Move to this side now. And we'll have one more, and then we'll see if we have to pull that last screw that's holding that back uh, bezel on or not. Sometimes I pull them and I don't need to. Sometimes I don't pull them and I do. So there you go. All right. Well, it looks like these four screws, they're all the same threads. They're all the same size. So it's not going to matter where you go to reinstall them. Where I'm going right now is to the, the back of the, the tray then. And we'll go ahead and put that in. Now let's see if we can remove it. We can remove it. So we're going to have to remove this to service the gear stack. But we're not going to have to service it to, to take it off. And as a matter of fact, even if I pulled those two off, it wouldn't have come off because we have the small screws underneath. Well, I haven't been counting the number of screws, but there's quite a few of them on this reel. And while I'm taking this plate off, I want to encourage you to ask questions if you uh, are working on a reel maybe you need a, uh, a question answered maybe you want to know a little bit more about the particular reel itself or just learn a little bit about a reel leave it in the comment section I do try to answer them and I do try to do that in the mornings so if you're kind of in a rush because you did something that uh, you can't understand what you did and you need an assist well it's probably going to be the morning before I answer those I did notice that the two screws on the bottom are shorter than the two screws on the top. So when we go to reinstall these, we're going to have to pay attention to that. I'm going to take those screws. There's a little cavity here on the bezel. I'm just going to put those in that bezel cavity. I'm going to move that off to the side. With that done now, I should be able to push through the gear stack. 
So a lot of what you do when you go to repair the reel or service the reel is to clean it. And we've got some small greases in here. I'm going to wipe those down. Not a lot, just, just enough. Here's the thing to notice again. Take the pictures. This is your anti-reverse dog that's going to stop your reel. And you've got a little plunger system here in case you wound up taking that off for some reason. Little plunger system. You've got an e-clip that's holding it on right here. Notice the orientation on the point for your dog and where that spring is seated. Don't touch that unless it's broken and you need to replace it. I have a lot of folks that send me reels where they got a little bit aggressive in kind of removing everything and then they wondered later on. Here's another way to, to look at the reels too because you're going to find that this is a little bit different. There's a flat surface on the main gear on this side and there's a little bit of a grooved inset on the other side of the reel. You'll notice it here. There's an inset on this side and that's going to face the other gear. So we're taking these gears down to clean off the grease inside. There's a little ring, I think Rick from Sarasota may have called me on it. And again, we're doing this to clean up. You can remove the whole stack if you want. This will come through, so we'll do that just to show you how it comes through. And notice on the front side of this one, the position of that assembly. The, there's a proud section here. And to reinstall, you're just simply going to line up those T-bars. Going to replace the little uh, plastic cap. Going to bring the main gear back on. These are the two sides. So the, the bigger one is going to be for the uh, low speed. The smaller one for the high speed. And now once that we've cleaned all the old grease off, it's time to put some new grease back in. So we're going to go ahead and use fishing reel grease to do just that. So I don't care what brand you're using. I happen to be using Pen Precision Reel Grease on a Shimano reel. I do care that you use fishing reel grease and not general household greases or uh, things that just might be convenient for you. Okay, that's the main gear setup. We've oiled the bearing. I'm gonna put a little bit of grease onto the shaft here where it goes through. And we should just simply be able to load this back in just like that. Sometimes it may work here that main gear wants to travel a little bit. So what I like to do is take that cap and just put it on there enough that uh, maybe it'll hold it from traveling. This one doesn't have a very tight uh, seal to it, so we're just going to leave that now. We're going to go over to our uh, lever drag assembly. On the back end of this you have a click tongue, so go ahead and put some oil on that. You want to do the same thing here that you did on the front end. You want to make sure it's clean. This is pretty much pristine. So you don't need to do anything with that. I'm going to grab a little bit of a scrubby pad and a rod and reel cleaner. And just clean the inside of this while I have a chance. There's no sense skipping steps along the way. If you're going to do a reel, make sure you do everything. Clean it as well as oil it. it just, uh, it's, a, it's a good time to do that. And then we have our braid on here. And braid with me, I tend to wind up getting it stuck in the channels of the reel. So what I like to do, well, what I like to do personally is replace the line when I'm servicing my reel, which is usually on an annual basis. I advise my customers to do that, but I don't replace the line or change it for them. And then I just put a rubber band on there so I can hold this tight. We're going to service the back end of this reel now. 
To do that, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm pretty sure that they got a sale on these uh, screws. And they drive me nuts because they're little screws. And those little screws tend to want to travel. Okay. Let's set the case off to the side. I already have a bunch of little screws there. Just trying to think of something that would be convenient here in terms of holding these. Again, take a picture before you start on this. I think what I'll do is I'm going to remove these little screws and put them right on the logo of uh, Second Chance Taco over there. Trying to keep these separate, we probably have about 20 or 25 screws so far, it's, at least it seems that way. And I always wonder when they're making these reels, the most efficient method for assembling a reel. I gotta believe if you're driving a lot of screws, there's probably a better way to do it. A lot of these lever drag reels have a, uh, a plate that just simply screws into the the base of the uh, spool. This one does not. All right. Wow. It's a good thing they're silver and the logo is a little bit darker. All right. So let's get this out of the way then. That's the sixth one. And again, if you're working like this, which is not my, my normal style. My normal style is to put pieces into a parts tray. But of course, we, we're loaded in that parts tray right now then just be careful as you move about your bench because they can and will jump out at you. All right, this is your pinning gear. And we should be able to pull this up and out now. There we go, we just got the collar off. That was a little sticky. This is our pressure plate assembly for the uh, the drag system. And what do you know, we have four more screws in there holding down the, the drag washer. I'm going to move this spring right now. I'm going to have to leave that on the table as well. At least I think they're going through the drag washer. Yep, they are. And this is where you want to start working sequentially. When you service something, go right back to putting it back on the reel because it's, after a while you're going to start to, to lose track of what went where if you've removed too many parts. All right, there's one more of these. So let's take care of that as well. There doesn't seem to be any tabs or anything holding it in. I'm trusting that it's the screws that are doing that. So we'll show you how to clean this dry washer. Let's take those off to the side for a moment and reinstall. In the meantime, I want to take that axle assembly out of there. So there's yet two more screws here. Probably should hold a contest to ask somebody to guess the number of screws in one of these reels. So it's been a while since I've done this one. But that's not an excuse. Okay. The two come off the back. That will enable us to remove the bearing assembly. Yet another location there. We've just pulled that out. We're going to clean the back. This is where you're going to get into an awful lot of trouble if you're not paying attention. You can Pretty much try to clean this and knock screws all over the place. All right, so that's cleaned up. There's a bearing underneath there, but I wanted to take that axle shaft out so that I can remove the drag washer. So you have two things going on here. You have a little bit of accumulated dirt inside there and a little bit of cleaning to do on the drag washer itself. This drag washer's got life left in it. It just may not look that way because it's got old greases and dirts in there. So what you want to do is take a hard brush and brush through to brush out the, uh, the dirt that may be causing this 
the slip. As long as you can see the cross hatches, I know this looks a little rough because of the way that it's been run. As long as you can see the cross hatches in that drag washer, you're okay. All right, we're going to go right back and put that where it belongs and get those other screws off the table quickly. Again, the more you leave them out there, the more you're kind of asking for trouble. with my secondary mini driver and those of you that know me know that this is a place where I do not excel working with small screws so if you're going to take a moment to go for your beverage of choice I will understand I will be right back I use a little bit of grease to kind of start to hold the screw. Let me get two more of these. Now I do not put grease onto these drag washers. I guess that's an optional thing. If you would like to, you can. I find that over time that grease dries, clogs the pores, and then you get slip. And we saw that there was a lot of clogging going on. All right, we'll do that. We have a bearing in the uh, case. I'm going to oil that bearing. And we have a bearing on the back end here. I'm going to oil that as well. I choose to oil the bearings, not to grease them. and. Uh, Judging by what is here in front of me, that's kind of the way it came from the factory. There does not appear to be any grease there. We're going to bring this through. And on the back end here, again, working towards getting those screws off the table and out of harm's way. I'm going to uh, bring the first of those screws in. And then we'll do the second one of those. So this is one of the things I think that Shimano excels at. I think there's two that they really do well. One of them is their lever drag reels. And I think the other one is their bait feeder reel is unsurpassed. It's particularly the older ones, the, the BTRs, the bait runners. Okay. That's basically it, with the exception of the spring that goes over both. Now we got a little bit of cleanup on this pressure plate assembly. There's a, one more bearing in here. It's on the back end of this. So we want to do the same thing here. We want to oil that last bearing. And we can put our bearing back on, our assembly pressure plate. So we got bearing spring bearing pressure plate assembly now we've got the little collar assembly and this one's going to be fun because the first one has got to be held down with your finger pressure as you go to put these little screws in the best way to do the little screws is to run opposite so get one started on the one side and run over to the other side and put one in. That'll keep the pressure equal. And then you don't have to strain your hand as much holding the rest of the pressure plate down. Again, I put these in the one little place for safe harbor so I know where to find them. And that's kind of the whole idea behind the parts tray. There's a lot of different systems you can use to organize your pieces and parts that come off of the reel. I choose to be chaotic. That is, most of my stuff goes into the parts tray. And it's just in a case like this where we've got so many pieces and parts on this reel that, uh, well, I ran out of space. Sometimes I'll open, actually open up a secondary tray and uh, I'll divide the parts by exterior pieces and interior pieces, things like that. 
And sometimes we'll, we'll kind of do what we just did here, right? We uh, do our best to keep track of them in multiple locations. Okay. Got that. There's one more on my table and there's one more open spot for it, so we're good there. Yeah, so uh, Rick sent me a variety of reels. He sent me a uh, two-speed Shimano Beastmaster. He sent me a single-speed Be Beastmaster. He sent me a pen reels lever drag. And uh, this one. And uh, as I like to do, I like to try and do a video for the reels that show up. Unfortunately, a lot of times... I'm limited in the amount of time I have to do the videos, so I thought this one would probably be one of the more interesting ones out of it. Okay, this has got a double-tiered uh, gearing system. Makes sense. You got a two-speed reel. First one's going to go in here, and you need to mesh it with the the teeth. That certainly makes it easier. And we're just going to make sure that those two get a good amount of grease. You might be thinking that this is a gear up here. This is not a gear. That's your click ratchet for the assembly. You do not need to put grease onto the click ratchet. Okay, that's a spool assembly. We've got the gear assembly. What we need to do before we we put the rest of the reel together is to put this bezel back on for the gear assembly. Again, we've got the four screws. Two were long, two were short. Do you remember which ones went where? Well, if you didn't, that's where you want to go and get your pictures. The two long ones belong up top. That's why there's no points in reel repair allowed for speed. It's not a race. If you race to take the reel apart, you may be missing a step, and if you miss a step, or you think that you will remember it, but you don't, well, then it becomes a little bit more difficult to reset it. The two small ones go below, and then we'll be able to put this back together. Give it a test, see how we did. It's all about patience, <laughs> and it's all about a sense of humor. If you can't laugh at yourself, don't start real repair. Because there's a lot of times where you know, that's probably be the only thing, when they say it's the best medicine, it'll keep you going. All right, we've already oiled the click ratchet assembly in the back. We're going to take our pin now for the spool. We're going to make sure it's even on both sides. Look for the piece in the back of the spool where that's going to merge in, just like that. That's your spool assembly. Next up then is the shield side. And what I like to do with this one, this is going to come down for your anti-reverse. So what I like to do when I put this in is spin the spool if it doesn't mesh the first time. trying to find the hole for the stud. There's two studs on each side. They belong in these holes here. That's it. 
that's it. A nice spinning spool. Okay, I just uh, ran out of memory on my card. There you go. At least I didn't run out of memory on myself. All right, well, we're just going to continue then. I have a, a limiter on my video where it says if I've gone 30 minutes, it shuts off. So we're back. Hopefully we didn't miss anything. So we've got three. This is the last of the long ones. Find the appropriate hole. Load that in. Now we got the outer shield. And we have the two screws that go on the bottom of that. This is one of the ones that kind of made me go get my micro drivers. Parts tray. Now we have our ring. Now there's a stud here, so you should be able to line that stud. There's actually two studs. Line those studs to the holes. Seat them properly. And this is where the balance of this reel kind of gets me sometimes because I want to put the shield on. I'm going to get the one started. Like that. Now I'm low to have a Teflon washer that goes behind. I'm going to grab the arm and then raise it up. And that should lock in. There's a little claw on the back here. I find that if you try to do this by screwing the one piece in the back bezel there and, and then trying to get that lip over it, it, it's kind of hard to do. If you do it where you set the one side, you have a little bit more balance there. And then we have the one flat piece, kind of going here, just like that. Alrighty, we've got our ramp set up now. You want, I would like to bring it over to the free spool. Position. I had to push that button in from behind. I have the two ramps. You want to nest those ramps into this. That'll give you your neutral position from the lever drag. Now we can come back with our spool and with the spring that goes in that, the preset for the spool. and tighten that down by hand. Okay, if you've done that right now, we should have a nice spinning spool. And as you advance, you should start to see the handle turn. And then you should be good. Well, that's what we got. Free spool, lock up, first strike, and so on. Well, we'll come back and we'll just tune that up a little bit as soon as we put the rest of the pieces on. So we have our handle bezel. Except there's a little washer that went on there. And our handle. 
This is always the fun part because this is the part that holds the, the trip assembly. So that goes in next. Tighten down on the trip. This is kind of the opposite of the way that we started, right? Everything goes back in the reverse order, essentially. All right, now we need to do a couple of things here, one of which is you got to play around a little bit with this. Again, remember you got that spring on there. Well, that came on easier than I thought. The problem is maybe in the alignment of this because that, that catch has to go over this nut. Oh, we just missed. <laughs> A little bit of irony there. We just missed. So we just get to do this again. I'm trying to line the screw holes up here. Not always easy. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to do this. I'm going to come in behind it because I've already got over the top. All I need to do is turn that nut just a little. I think we got it there. Perfect. All right, grab our little screw. This is the one that always gives me the thrill. Just on uh, spring assembly here. Here's a little bit of grease. Is this screw glue? Put that on. Remember, you're not safe with that spring yet, so just be careful as you're doing this. You're more safe than you've been, but you're not safe. Set that into its track. Now that we have this alignment right here, we're in good condition. All right, now we can give it a test be fully uh, utilized here. Okay, here we go. So we're in free spool, running away. First strike. That that click click click. That's that uh, anti-reverse, right? Over to full speed, and you you're, you're locked in with the drag. And of course, if you need to adjust the free spool lever, you need to do it in free spool mode. Do not bring it over here and figure you need more drag and start tightening away. You risk damaging the reel. Okay, free spool, first strike. That's a nice, nice set. Full drag, we're in. I like it that way. If uh, Rick wants to change that, he can. Lock in your high speed. You'll see that you're traveling quicker because you've got the lower one. Test it. Looks great. Want to go back to the low speed? Just push. Or actually push for high. Do the same. That's it. There you go. That is your Shimano Tyranos 10-2. You've seen how to take it apart, how to service it, and how to get it out there fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, get your reels ready. Fishing season is coming. I, I wish you all the best in terms of your tune-ups and repairs. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To uh, all, please have a great day. And look, look forward to hearing your stories of fish caught on newly refurbished reels. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.